Hello, Barry Osborne here from Rural Mission Solutions. You're about to watch a video recording of one of our online Sunday services. Through the pandemic, we have had regular online Sunday services and also Bible studies. We hope that you will enjoy this. I hope you remember to give us a thumbs up afterwards. Uh, I have to apologize that music that we use has been stripped out uh, because of copyright conditions, uh, but the links are there. And so if you make a note of them, they're tremendous songs that we, that we had, and there are available on YouTube, and I just commend those to you. Don't waste the opportunity, enjoy those. They will supplement what you've got, but enjoy this video, and then remember to like it. Thumbs up afterwards. Thanks so much. Welcome to everybody for our online Sunday service this 10th of January, 2021, where our theme is Wise Men come to Jesus. And with me as usual are my very good friends, Gordon Banks. Good morning and good blessings to you. And David Wells. Good morning. Hope you're all well this morning. So we will be sharing in this service this morning. And at the end of the uh, service, there'll be coffee pot, an opportunity just for the people to linger on a little longer if they wish. Uh, we have a song which we're keeping right to the end, so that if you slip away, uh, please slip away quietly if you slip away before the song has come on or before it's finished playing, because otherwise noise will interrupt it and spoil it for others. But uh, if you can stop on, please do. It'd be good to see you. But of course, lots of churches are now uh, getting back together and meeting on Sundays, and then some are shutting down because of the circumstances. Let's have a prayer together. Gracious God, we just commend to you the time that we're now going to spend together looking into your word and sharing in worship. Lord, you are deserving of all our adoration and praise. And Lord, we ask that you will move in our hearts by your spirit, that your presence within will uh, be vibrating and that, uh, that our worship may be truly in spirit and in truth. So, Lord, we offer ourselves and our time, our topic to you, and ask for your help and your wisdom in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to <clears throat> start with a carol, okay? Um, we're, we're, we're sort of tail end, aren't we, of, of, of Christmas. I know Epiphany in many churches was celebrated last Sunday. So um, we, we, but, uh, it's going to be our theme for today. Um, and uh, Epiphany, now that's a funny word, isn't it? What does it mean? David, what's Epiphany? That's caught him out. Uh, it means revelation, Barry. You might even say a bit of a learning exercise. Actually, you might say it's an apocalypse. Oh, right, yes. Because it's revelation revealing. Okay, yeah. okay. So we could, when people say, I've had an epiphany, it's like yep. a light bulb moment. That's it. Yep, exactly. Okay. Spot on. Okay, so the Magi, Magi were having light bulb moments. Well, so, and that's another question. What's, what, what does Magi mean? Is David there? Come on, David. Yeah, I'm, I'm here now. The, the Magi were, were, were the sort of the, the intelligent people of, of, sort of the Persian and, and sort of our Iranian area, Middle East. They, they, they specialise in studying the stars. Ah, so, right. So, so later on, the sort of the it was used in the English word for magic, but it's not. They weren't really magicians. They were more people who studied the stars, which, in a sense, was the science of their day. Yeah, astronomy, as yeah. opposed to astrology. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's have this carol. So we've chosen for in the bleak midwinter, and uh, written by Christina Rossetti. A number of her poems have been turned into hymns and carols. And this is, I know, a very popular one. But that carol is not very biblical. I don't, don't know what others think about it. I mean, for a start, it wasn't winter. Uh, another thing that we have, popular things with nativity is donkeys. There's no reference to a donkey. Uh, there's, there's an assumption that's being made. It doesn't talk about an inn. It, the word that's used in the original Greek is not in, it's the upper room, uh, similar to where the Last Supper was held. It doesn't say anything about a stable, although it does mention a manger. The shepherds certainly didn't bring a lamb. 
uh, and and they they were not kings, um, or or were they only three? We don't we're not told they're only three. So there's a lot of tradition, but it's not actually in the Bible. And if you haven't checked it out, it's well worth looking at it again. But of course, the Bible does have an important message to share with us, and uh, so it's good to know that. And uh, David was you were telling us just now that the Magi then were the scientists of their day. And they had traveled perhaps from Persia to, to, uh, to, to, to come, a, come across. So um, quite, quite an in, in, interesting thing. We're going to try and unpack some of that as we go on this morning. Gordon, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's hear from you for, for, for a while. Uh, tell us something uh, about your reflections on this story that we're thinking about of these Magi coming to visit Jesus. In, interesting, Barry, is, is that if we look back, I mean, I've got um, a passage from Isaiah 60 here, um, and it said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. So you can see where we start getting kings from yep. as people put these together. Yep. Um, then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall rejoice and thrill. Uh, because the abundance of the seas shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense oh, right. and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, we always have to put Jesus in that larger context. And of course, when we think of Sheba, uh, we're thinking of another important queen yeah. who paid a visit to another king, of course, Solomon, haven't we? Yes. And so you've got this kind of theme running throughout the um, Hebrew Bible, the, the Old Testament. Uh, of, of course, we've got the peculiar people, the particular people, God's people. But yet it seems to be that God is always wanting to uh, at times step outside them and say, this is your role. Uh, and we think about that. We've mentioned about the Queen of Sheba. Uh, we might think the two that Jesus mentioned, the, um, which we've discussed, the army general Naaman and his cleansing from lepra. The widow of Zarephath is another one as well. Uh, and then during Jesus' ministry, the Syrophoenician woman, yes. way there up in the up in the uh, northwest there. Um, uh, and then just before in John's gospel, Jesus goes to be glorified through his death. We have the Greeks coming and wanting to see Jesus as yeah. well. Um, so, but you know, the, thankfully and mercifully and wonderfully we as gentiles have been grafted into the vine we hear this again this is explored a lot in the letters of paul and others uh, and we're now counted as children of abraham by faith not by ethnicity or the keeping of the law and in this story the curtain we talked about revelation is just beginning to be opened up and we begin to get a glimpse when we look back at the prophecies like Isaiah and others have created of God going to do a new thing and reveal himself and invite the Gentile nations in uh, to share in the great riches of, um, of, of all that he gave to the children of God through his life. So so, so the, the key point that you're mentioning is that, that the story of the visit of the Magi emphasizes for us that Jesus was the saviour of the world, which is what they actually did announce, the angel announced that, that Jesus mm -hmm. is the saviour of the world. And not just the saviour of the Jews, but yes. the gospel is for all, and Jesus' birth brings in this wider aspect. Yeah. And that, that's very interesting. David, have you got any reflections? Well, well, I'm sort of reflecting on that, that the fact that the, the major were wise men, and I quite like sort of... Um, sort of documentaries and particularly comedy programs which are about wise people I quite like QI but sometimes I doubt some of the some of the things they say because I can think of one episode when they they had the questions how many commandments are in the bible and for some reason they came up with the figure 14 which is absolute nonsense really but what bothered me most was that one of the, the other panelists sort of said well None, because it, they, it, it's not real. 
And I thought, well, that's the attitude that a lot of people have today. Yes, they do. Uh, it, it's it's not real. The, that Christianity isn't real. That faith isn't real. And we need to rely on scientists. But that doesn't really fit the facts. In fact, there was a survey done in America that um, in 2009 of all the top scientists in the United States, and over half of them had a faith, a belief, mm -hmm. and a third of them were committed active Christians. So it's not true that intelligent people don't believe in God and people who believe in God are not intelligent. What, what I think is, is interesting about the, the story of the Magi is that they were, as, as I've said, the intelligent people of that day, intelligent, not sort of, um, as we said, they weren't, they were Gentiles and, uh, but they came and they accepted the, the Christ child. Of course, they, they got it a little bit wrong. They expected because they were looking for a child born to be king. They, they headed for the palace, but yeah. they were guided by two things, by scripture. And they were also guided by, by the, the star, as we know. And sort of, they were described by scripture. We, we, got, we get told that they were told the scripture about from um, Micah, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah, and out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And then they had the revelation of the star, which they, they followed, and in the image of Matthew, they, it stopped over the place where the child was. And it strikes me in these cynical times that we too, as Christians, have scriptures and revelation. And I think that's why it's very important that we, we know our scriptures, that we read our scriptures. And uh, not only do we sort of just listen to them in church, but read them ourselves. And uh, there's so many aids these days, U UCB and, and Scripture Union, that will help us to understand the Bible. Yes, indeed. And it's also, it's also very good, very good sort of to... to um, sort of uh, study it with other people and we have a bible study on a on a tuesday evening don't we barry that people can come and we're looking going through one corinthians at the moment and it, it's excellent just to read what the, the bible actually says and though we don't have a star to guide us at the moment we do have the holy spirit we have the holy spirit and he will guide us and i think in this cynical world sort of that we do have science, but science is, is an awful lot about sort of um, stating how things are. Whereas we have faith, and science doesn't give us all the answers. And faith is about believing and having belief in, in God. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, some people say um, that, that science explains how, whereas uh, the scripture tells us why. And, yeah. and that's important. But on this issue of believing, uh, I've often struggled and talked with people about what it means when the Bible says about believing, like believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. What does it mean to believe? Is it something you have to do with your head or is it a heart thing? Because sometimes I think that there are people who have honest doubts who say, I just can't believe. It's almost like saying, do you believe in Santa Claus, you know, and um, there's an issue of what does it mean to believe? Do you believe with your head? Can you believe with your heart? And I think actually the, the word for believing in that context might be better to talk about trusting. It's the ability to trust. And maybe it does require that step of faith. So there's a challenge. But I think it has to be both. What do you think, David? I think it has to be heart and mind. I think it has to be, be heart and mind. I, I was actually ro watching a scientific film by the Moody Institute this 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 week, and uh, they were talking about um, um, the city of the bees and about sort of yeah. how God works through things. But then he, he used the illustration that belief isn't just about saying this is what I know is sort of what I think and what I, we often use that. Oh, I believe that to be true, meaning I'm not sure. 
it's more he used the illustration of a chair he said i can believe the chair will hold me but i only really believe when i sit down that's that a very chair. good point very very good point i think that actually that's not a bad lead in to our next hymn that uh, we've got. Gordon suggested this, but it actually does fit in well. It has a reflection on the nativity story, but it also takes us from there a little bit forward. And when I was a child, I used to sing this um, in Sunday school and in church. Uh, I cannot tell. And then when I became a Christian in my teens and was um, a very passionate uh, uh, Christian, I, I used to think it, it, that, that I don't like it. I don't like this, I cannot tell, because there are things that I'm now sure of. But now there are aspects concerning how God is working out his purposes that leave me still puzzled. So that's what this hymn is all about. If you're muted, you'll have a line through your microphone. And if you are muted, do feel free to sing along. If you're not muted, please don't sing. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful mm. hymn, and what a vision it, it, it gives to us all. Thank you for choosing that, Gordon. That was really good. Mm, fabulous. And um, if you're uh, watching this on a recording on YouTube, just to say we're so sorry that the music is stripped out, but the links are there, and uh, we suggest that you use those, and uh, you can either pause the recording and and then open up another tab and listen to the music from YouTube or just you do them at the end, but they're well worth hearing. I do recommend that you do that. But we come now to our Bible reading, which is from Matthew chapter two. Or if you've got your Bible with you, you should have no difficulty finding Matthew, first book in the New Testament. Chapter two tells us this account of these wise men, these intelligentsia, these intellectuals, these scientists, these thinking people who have come to visit Jesus as David has so helpfully set out. David, I think it'd be nice if you were to read the first part of our Bible reading, and then um, it includes, you mentioned about them being guided by scripture, so it talks about that, and then uh, perhaps Gordon, you would take up the reading uh, on the next screen. Thank you, Barry. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the, in the days of Herod the king, <coughs> behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod <coughs> the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered all the priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not least among the rulers of Judah. Out of you shall come a ruler who will Shepherd him, my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. I, I think that's very intriguing, uh, just digging into the thing, you know, obviously <clears throat> the, the dream they had, we don't know exactly what the dream was, that they were warned uh, in, in that they should not return to Herod. Um, but obviously... Um, Herod was a pretty w wicked man, obsessed with his own power. And uh, of course, there were some unintended consequences, 
which we're not going to go into, but tragic that that, that, that should develop. Um, I, I've been thinking about something else that, that, that really comes to me also through this story. And, and it's the, the fact that uh, these people had traveled a distance. David was telling us that uh, they'd probably come from Persia. <clears throat> and um, so we have uh, an interesting issue of them taking a journey. So, you know, sometimes when people uh, come to faith in Christ, it's like an amazing spontaneous thing. You know, some people do have what are called sometimes Damascus Road conversions. Suddenly, dramatically, their world is turned upside down as they have found Jesus as their savior. And I think back to a, a particular time, I was already a Christian, but not a very strong Christian, not a committed Christian. Um, and uh, I sat in a meeting listening to a lady evangelist speaking. And uh, as uh, she was speaking, uh, she was speaking about the death of Jesus on the cross and the love of God and how Jesus was able to forgive the people that had done terrible things to him. And as she spoke, I found myself overwhelmed by this message of love. And I had a sudden dramatic experience. But in some senses, my faith had started when I was a young child and I made a response to the gospel when I was a young child. And uh, then I went through phases. I rebelled, didn't want to know. And then I started to come back. And like David, fact and faith films, science-based films. I remember City of the Beast, marvelous film. And I, and I can remember some of these films, how they spoke to me. And, but I was a science student. I, was, I studied maths, uh, pure and applied maths and physics. And I was full of doubts, full of questions. And I was part of a philosophical society. So, it was a long journey for me in some ways. And, and the wise men, it took them time to get where they wanted to go. And I wonder whether there's people here this morning. Some of you had a sudden experience. Others, it's taken you time. And we need to be careful if we've had the sudden experience that we're not critical of those for whom, you know, they are still struggling with questions. They're still on the journey. They haven't got there yet, you know. Uh, maybe they're close, uh, but they're not quite there. And we need to be understanding and loving and patient of, of, of people like that. Gordon, I'm coming back to you. I think you've got a few other thoughts that you want to pull out. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and that journey is uh, so important. And we're, we're told, I mean, when we look at the um, rather sad um, stories, it moves on with Herod uh, of two years. So, you know, you mentioned earlier about the stable and all of this stuff. Uh, and of course, uh, so often a uh, crib scenes will have the Magi in the crib scene, but no, you know, the, look what the text said. Nothing wrong in adding a bit of, but be careful. You've got the scripture text and then the traditions and the accretions that are added to it. Yeah. Note that, you know, they came to the house and the child Jesus. So we we look like we've got a settled family now. They've settled down, and um, uh, and I mentioned Isaiah earlier. And if we look at the Psalm seventy two, that almost echoes what Isaiah says, because in uh, in Psalm seventy two verses one seven and ten fourteen, I won't read them all, but just pick up some of these as well. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. Verse 72, chapter, uh, verse 10. May the kings of Tarshish and the isles render him tribute. May the king of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. Uh, it, it's that same thing again. And... You know, we, we read this story and it, again, it was just one of those things that pulled me up. What was the first thing they did when they came in yeah. and saw they didn't offer the gifts? I wouldn't say that. The first thing they did, they worshipped him. These are Gentiles worshipping this child of a peasant family. They'd gone to the palace, as David reminded us, naturally, but he wasn't there. So what was it that they saw in this child that made them bow down and worship? And of course, 
we all worship something and we just need to be careful. Worship simply means what we give worth to. Yes. So what is it that we give our worth to? And, you know, we, so the, what was it that they saw in this child as they, uh, as they worshipped? And what are we actually worshipping? And where is our focus of our attention and our love and our devotion? I mentioned the gifts, didn't I, about the, the gold, frankincense and mare. Uh, and we, we think, uh, we might run on you say, and gold is for a king and, and frankincense is for a priest and mare tells of his death. Well, yes, but that's a reflection. Okay, it's a good reflection, I think, and one we combine to. It's a reflection. We need to be careful again. But I just want to mention the gifts, Barry, and I just want to tell a couple of um, little stories, very short ones. One was a, a service that I did in um, St. Mary's in Cheviok, a little rural church there in Cornwall. Uh, and on this occasion, the crib service, and I had a fairly sized crib out, um, the, the manger kind of thing, um, in a traditional kind of style that we might sing like a feeding trough with all the straw and thing. Uh, and from that, spilling a cloth that went down in front of the church, and then I invited people to bring and lay on the cloth as a gift, something like their credit card, their watch to give their time. If they were um, if they knitted, they put knitting down there or put a, a diary down there or something that kind of represented a gift they gave. Um, this was early on in the service and we went through the service. And at the end, I invited them to take them back and said, remember now, you have given them to God. Now, God gives them back to you. But when you use your money, your time, whatever it is you've laid down there, you're first of all offering it. You're using it first and foremost for God, because that's what you've done now. I like and, that. Yeah, I like it, 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 I, it was a very, very moving, absolutely very moving. And then another occasion, there was a lady, I think it was a lady, who had gathered the children around. They're going to prepare for a nativity play. So she said, what do you want to come as? Always a bit dangerous to kind of like an open question to children. <laughs> so one little bright lad, but I want to come as a cowboy. Oh, dear. And that set the snowball rolling. I want to come as a spaceman. I want to come as a doctor. I want to come as a truck driver. And it went on and on. And she had the sense, and maybe I would like to think the prompting the Holy Spirit said, yes, come as those things, dressed as those things. However, there's one proviso. What you must do, you must bring a gift to Jesus that would be what that person would bring to them. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming as a spaceman, fine. But what would a spaceman bring to Jesus? What would a cowboy bring to Jesus? Um, and, you know, what that showed is, is that Jesus is for all times, for all peoples, for all cultures. And so it was a fabulous, uh, and I, well, I followed that, through, that idea yeah, through, man. and it really works wonderfully well. Yeah, now, he, so my question, just to end here, is that um, here we are on the 10th of January 2021. Uh, the year's not very old yet. And um, rather than pretending to be whatever else it might be, like those children pretended to be, who are you right here, right now, this morning? Who are you right here, right now, this morning? Who are you worshipping? And most importantly of all, what gift are you going to come and lay down at the feet of Jesus? Gordon, that's a great note just for us to stop and pause for a moment. And maybe privately, people might like to say, Lord, I want to rededicate my life to you. And I'm going to bring this gift to you right now. You know, I love the Isaac Watts hymn that says, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And uh, perhaps particularly, we can think back to that carol, what I can I give him, give my heart. So let's just be still for a moment, and uh, then we're going to move on to our intercessions. But this is your moment to make a, an offering to King Jesus.
And I'd like to say that if this has been a significant moment for you, that we ask you just to drop us a line, we'll give you the contact details and tell us something about that. You can do that knowing that we're not going to broadcast what you say unless you give us permission. But uh, I believe God was speaking to people and if he spoke to you, then please act on that and, and firm it down by dropping us an email, letting us know and saying, this is my response to King Jesus today. Now let's move on to our intercessions and uh, we're going to ask uh, David, I think, to lead us first. Yes, we continue in prayer with our intercessions. And we've, we've sang about a God who heals the brokenhearted and many of us were quite upset by the, few, the things we saw this week from America and we pray for that country especially. We pray for reconciliation between the Republicans, the Democrats, between people who, who are afraid of, of what is going to happen into the future. We pray for leadership, both of, of the present administration. We pray for President Trump and Mike Pence. And we pray for Joe Biden and his cabinet, Lord. And we pray for the world as well. That, a world, that our world will be one that is working together for peace. Particularly with all the issues around COVID at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Uh, uh, and we do pray for those battling against the pandemic for the fear that is around at this time, for the rollout of the vaccine, and particularly the debate and discussion that's uh, started in other countries, but certainly in our own country as well. Do we offer the vaccine to developing countries? And so we do pray for grace and mercy and generosity of spirit to be in that discussion. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Let me think about those unintended consequences of the visit of the wise men, the Magi, and the tragedies that followed because of the aggressiveness of Herod, and not a good man at all. And we think of those who suffer from bad behavior, children who are misused, children who are abused children who are left hungry, some forced to work. And we pray for them and we pray for all those who work on their behalf, seeking to protect them or to respond to their needs immediately, their food and shelter. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless the emergency services and all who give their lives to show your love to children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those whom we know. So let's take a moment to quietly name before God those whom we know who are suffering, who are upset, who are afraid, who are in mourning at the moment. We pray for comfort for those who are distressed. We pray for help for those who are afraid. And we pray for those who mourn, that they will receive that blessing from God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we've been thinking about the wise men coming and uh, study and so we pray as we for ourselves as we move into this year that we will dedicate ourselves to studying God's word mm -hmm. pray father that we may be bold in perhaps stepping outside of our comfort zone we just to stretch our minds into new avenues of thought 
whilst remaining faithful to the scriptures. Pray that you would present to us various other opportunities that may come our way to study your word. But pray, Father, that we may go on a journey, that we dedicate ourselves to a journey true and deeper into the scriptures, the whole of the scriptures this year. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our uh, prayer. And we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing today this service with us. And I hope that we hope that you will actually have got something out of it and it will inspire you for this coming week. You're welcome to join us and stay on for Coffee Pot after the service and we'll have a chat together. But please come next week. And please remember that you, everyone is welcome at the Bible study on Tuesday evening. And don't forget to tell your friends. And uh, lovely to be with you this morning, Golden Banks here. And so I'm saying goodbye and God bless you. But as we've been talking about here, if you are uncertain um, and really want to know more about the Christian faith or you want to help somebody else know how they can embrace the Christian faith. Remember that about that it, it can satisfy both the sage and the sinner. Yeah. Can, it can satisfy an intellectual person as the, that's the wonder of the message. Well, this is the place to go. Uh, www, all the W's, Christianity.org.uk. Yeah, important you get the address right. It's uh, all the W's, as Gordon said, Christianity.org. Dot UK. And we welcome your feedback. Now, do send us an email uh, and uh, we welcome your comments, any suggestions you may make, uh, any questions you have, any questions about faith. Just, just feel free to drop us a line at info at ruralmissions.org.uk. Keep your eye on our website, ruralmissionsolutions.org.uk and uh, see all the different aspects of the work. And we, we need your prayers, so please do pray for us. If you can remember to pray for us uh, every day, that'd be great. Uh, and maybe sometimes the Spirit will prompt you to pray. But Gordon and David and I and, and all our trustees, everybody, we all need your prayers. And a word of thanks to those who in the last week have donated. We're very grateful for your gifts and ministry. Please remember to support your own church Make sure you're not uh, failing to give support to your church. But if you want to give online, this is a secure website, www.give.net forward slash 2003088. Give.net forward slash 2003088. So David, Gordon and I have been grateful for your fellowship today if you need to rush off because you've got another online service to do or go somewhere please feel free to slip away now we're going to actually have a song just as we go out so this is a little bit extra uh, our time is actually up but we're going to just play this wonderful song if you're stopping on for coffee pot for fellowship together uh, just sit back and listen to this and as soon as this is over then we will unmute you and uh, we can chat t t together. But this is a tremendous song written and sung by Mark Lowry with Voctive singing with him. Mm -hmm.